we feel the winds of change. The sea is being ravished by man's greed, not given a chance to replenish itself. Our catches are smaller, our plants close one by one. Our children grow discontent and look away. We are disturbed. Midsummer 1993. Fourteen women come together in a classroom in Plate Cove, Bonavista Bay. All former plant workers, all on the package. Now students of a seven-week retraining course, financed with moratorium money. Career explorations, and today is graduation day. Without further ado, uh, we'll start with the first graduate of Career Exploration 101, 1993 in Plate Cove, Joanne Furlong. Congratulations, Mary. Mary Philpott. Congratulations, Mary. These women all worked at the Connie FBI Pike. plant in Charleston, one of three plants on the Bonavista Peninsula. Very Yetman. When the lock went on the door, they were thrown out of work and put on the package. Jeanette Fitzgerald. I'm Pauline Thornhill. Tonight, we meet three of these former plant workers and see whether this course makes a difference in their lives. Mary Maloney. Congratulations, Mary. Mary Maloney, 51 years old, married from Sweet Bay. I'd like to go back to school, really. I'd like to go back and take some trade, but what I'd like to do is something that I'm really interested in. There would be no point in me taking something that I didn't care about now. But I think a lot, of, a lot of them out there are going to go ahead and do some things. I really do think so. Claudine Ricketts. Claudine Ricketts, 45 years old, married from Knights Cove. It's only for younger people, I think, to go back to school if they haven't got the grade 12, or grade 11 or grade 12, and then t go and take a course. But I'm out of school 30 years, and I don't feel like I should be pressured to go back to school. Congratulations, Betty. Thank you. Betty Quinton, 33 years old, single, from Somerville. It's going to work for some of the younger people, but as for the older people, I mean, they got after life spent. What are they going to do now? I mean, what are they going to retrain them for, really? There's no jobs out there for the young graduates coming out now, so where are they going to get jobs for, for the older people, for us at my age? And so they go, supposedly armed with the information they need to make the best decisions for their future. Now we watch the next year unfold. January 1994. things look bleaker than ever. Cod stocks are actually shrinking, not growing. Over a year and a half into the moratorium, scientists say northern cod is at its lowest point this century. Some are talking total extinction. For Mary Maloney, it's the stuff of poetry. Mary's 12 years at the Charleston plant inspired an assortment of poems and cartoons, like this one, a trimmer getting a raking over for too many bones. This one here uh, is for the trimmers, because it seemed like the trimmers were the ones that got the hardest time in the plant. So, you know, I said a little light humor wouldn't hurt, so I just did a poem and a picture for them. And it was funny, they enjoyed it. And I went from there, then, Somebody else said, why won't you do one for us, the packers and the graders and so on and so on. So I just went from there and I covered most of what happened in the plant. Mary left the career exploration course in Plate Cove thinking about a commercial art or creative writing program. But that was then. Tell me what's been happening with you since we were here last. 
Well, basically nothing. I, if you mean, have I gone back to school? No, I haven't. And I haven't done any, any more training. So why did you decide not to carry on? Well, I didn't really know what to do. I, the way I feel right now is if I can't take something that interests me, that I could be totally involved with, then at my age, I don't want to get into anything. So, and there wasn't anything in this area that I could find, not in the Clarenville area. Mary has ties here in Sweet Bay, a home, a family. So she believes she can't move, not for school or for work. Here you go. And she's a grandmother now, too old, she thinks, to start over. As long as there's a package, she doesn't have to. She can afford to wait and pray the fishery comes back. I suppose it's hard to give up hope and then like I said, this is about the only thing that most of us did in our lifetime was work in the fish plant, and it's, it's hard to think that, that you won't get back to it anymore and, and you don't really know how to do anything else. You're not trained for anything else, so. But you could be trained for other things. Well, you could, yes, right. But it takes a, a lot of nerve and courage and a lot of us don't have that anymore. You're a contradiction because to talk yeah. to you, you're such an advocate of retraining. You see all the good points about it, but yet you decided not to go for it yourself. How am I supposed to make sense of that? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, uh, I, well, I, like I told you before, I, I see it for younger people. I really do see retraining for younger people. I mean, it, it's a glorious opportunity to get help right now that, that'll never happen again for sure. But I don't see it for older people. I just can't. You know, it's just the, the job opportunities are not there, and the age makes a difference, like I told you before, and I just don't see it for older people. For one night a week, the women near Knights Cove forget about the fishery. Ladies' Dart Night, where we catch up with Claudine Ricketts. Like Mary, Claudine has a home and family here. And like Mary, she hasn't gone back to school. She hasn't been in a classroom since the course in Plate Co. We just waste time and energy. It's time and money. Government money is time is a waste as far as I'm concerned. So wh why do you say that, Sylvia? I can't see what benefit it done. It didn't do any benefits enough for me. I don't know. Do retraining for us? I'm concerned. I don't know. Most some people when with trade school and different places like that, they might have benefit. But what we're, what they're doing in Playcove is no benefit for anybody. I don't think so. Almost every woman in this lively little group has been touched by the moratorium. None of them are kidding themselves about the chances of finding other jobs in this area. There are none. Yet they know the package can't last forever. I don't see the sense in worrying. No. Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. So there's no good to worry about it until the time comes, I say. We found Betty Quinton in the Eastern Community College in Clarenville. Betty is the youngest of our former plant workers and single. There's no husband or children tying her to her home in Somerville. So after 12 seasons in the plant, she decided to trade the filleting knife for the pen. She's enrolled in a two-year program in banking and financial services, paid for under the package. Betty, what's it like being back? It's different. A lot of work. I've been out of school for 
15 years, so it takes a little bit of getting, you know, getting used to. A lot of getting used to. A lot of getting used to. A lot of getting used to. It's a lot of work. I put a lot of time into it. So why did you decide to come back? Well, I'm involved with the fishery and with the moratorium, and didn't see to be much future there, so you had to uh, decide to do something. I saw this course in the packet, so I applied for it. Now, a lot of people, though, have they don't have a whole lot of faith in retraining. No, but at least when you've got some training, you've got something to fall back on. I mean, if you go forward with nothing, you've got nothing to turn to. And the moratorium, the in-carp is paying for the training, so it's a good time to take advantage of it. So you see it as an opportunity? As an opportunity, yes. The first day, Betty sat in her car in the school parking lot for an hour, trying to decide whether to come in or not. She was worried about being oldest in the class, about being able to handle the course. But Betty went through with it, perhaps because of her seven weeks in Plate Cove. Going through that course, I think, it made me realize that the fishery is probably not going to be there forever, so you've got to do something. When you got together with the old plant buddies and one thing or another, you realize that you had to move on, you had to make some decision. Like I knew from the beginning when the moratorium was started, it was called that I wanted to retrain. I just had to develop my nerve to, to really decide where I was going. And I think the course probably made me, if I hadn't been there in that school, I probably would have never filled out the application. Last winter, people like Betty Quinton were wondering what would happen after May 15th the cutoff date for the original package. A new Liberal government in Ottawa had promised help would continue, but no one knew what shape that help would take, or what shape their lives would take once the winter ended, when the dust finally settled on the remains of the fishery. Big trawlers have come from these strange foreign lands. They're taking the fish from our fishermen's hands. The small fishing boats are all moored on the shore. Our children are leaving, come back no more. Who can we turn to and what can we say? Our whole way of life is just slipping away. Summer 1994, almost one year since we first met the plant workers of Charleston. The lobster season is about to begin, and so is the new fish aid package. There's more money for everyone until Christmas and money for some up to five years after. As well, there's more money for retraining. Claudine Ricketts team finished first in darts. These days, she spends a lot of time in the woods with her husband, Jim, and she's happy enough with the new package. Claudine figured for sure she'd be cut off after May 15. Now she's hoping she'll qualify after Christmas as well. If worse comes to worse and you're cut off in December, will you and Jim still be okay? I mean, do you think you'll manage? I don't know. That's what we've got to wait and see then. I don't know what's going to happen, right? I mean, Jim's working at construction work, but uh, he's only going from job to job every summer with different contractors, and he don't know if he's going to get anything this summer. So if I'm cut off the package in December and he gets no work, what have we got? Nothing. Right? So I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. But you don't worry about it. And I'm it. not going to worry about it until the time comes. <laughs> No good worry, so I'm not going back to school unless I really is forced to go. 
That's the only way I'll go. But if there's work, I don't care if it's in the woods or where there's to, I'll go. <laughs> if I get to go training that way, right? You know, if you got to put you to work to keep on your package, I'll work, but I'm not going to school. Just not for you? No, not for me. I'm a door person. <laughs> I'm not in, I don't like to be barred in all day. I like to be out. And at least it gives you a chance to put your plant boots back on. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you wear them at something. <laughs> you can't wear them at the plant anymore. No, can that's you? right. <laughs> We found Betty Quinton at home in Somerville. Look at Sam's side. She's still at the community college, but this evening she's making time for the local 4-H club. No, 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 that's Debbie's down where the reach It's the youth group's achievement day. Betty's been a leader in the club for 11 years. Oh, Joey does that, and you move. It's only for the minutes, it's only once, okay? Yeah, and he does it in all seconds. The 4-H program, I haven't changed. Uh, it's still as important to me now as it ever was. But like I said, I haven't got as much time now, although I'm, sometimes I make break for school work for the 4-H program. That's how important it is. So how is school going? Slow, at a slow pace. I'm doing as well as I would like to, but I'm getting through it. You stand up and say, I move. That the minutes be accepted as read. Okay? I moved as a minute. Minutes be accepted, accepted as read. Where's Arlene? Arlene? You see Arlene? What simple what is it? Caesar. C E. C E. C A E S A R. Yes. Don't be eager. Do what I'm telling you. <laughs> you. You're welcome to judges, okay? Yeah. You've got three judges. And it's not area, isn't it? I didn't see her, no. No. Okay. So, how would you describe the last year of your life, Betty? When you look back at it all, all the things that have happened, the changes. Hectic. Very hectic. Very hard to work. It's a, I don't know, I'll explain it really. It's a big change. I'm trying to go back to school. I've been out of school for 15, 16 years, so it's a big change. Then you don't have as much time for the things that, well, the 4 H program was the most important thing in my life as far as I was concerned. I haven't got the time to spend with it that I want to. And it's a big change. Are you happy with your new life? Mm. Not, not as much as I should be, I guess. Do you think that'll change over time, though? I get, well, if I ever get to school, I guess it'll change. <laughs> Mary Maloney is still writing poetry, although the garden's taking up her time today. This is the first package of potatoes we ever sold, eh? Her husband, Bill, has signed up for a local cod farming course. And Mary's thinking the new package may give her a shot at early retirement. There's a possibility that I can retire. Well, I mean, whatever you get is better than nothing, for sure. So if we can get early retirement, then it'll be something. So you're not as worried now? Not as you really, were no. I'm not, not quite as worried as I was. Still, the last year hasn't been easy, not for anyone. Like I said, the security is not there, and there's always a worry what's going to happen down the road. And, and then you got your family there, where are they going to go? And they're not going to be around anymore, that's for sure. You know, it, it's an upsetting thing for everybody. And people are still upset because they still really don't know what's going to happen or where their fish plants are going to go, are they going to be opened or, you know, and there's a lot of younger people, say from 35, 45, that are really caught up. And uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's still not what we want, it's still not settled and I don't know what will happen. We'll have to wait and see. Mary has come to know one thing over the past year 
the fishery will never again be as it was. And while the package means security, at least for the short term, it also marks the end of an era, the era of Outport Newfoundland. The way I look at it, I mean, it's, it's going to be a shame for this, this way of life to go, you know. And, and uh, I know it was rough and uh, people had to work hard and everything else, but, but still there was something there that it's going to be a shame for it to be gone. It'd be a pity to lose it. Because, you know, people were, I don't know, they were more self-reliant and they were more helpful to one another. And uh, I don't know, just it's a different, different breed of people that you're going to lose. Totally. That's the way I look at it. So how's the writing going, Mary? Well, if I, if I got something like this to write about, I don't have any problem. <laughs> no problem. Our villages are quiet, deserted even by the screaming seagulls. The boats are huddled like forlorn ghosts along the beaches. The fishing nets hang like dusty, forgotten cobwebs on the sagging fences. And we, a once proud people, are held up to scorn and ridicule, caught in a vacuum between the past and the future. And we see the very life's blood of our heritage seep into the hungry, unforgiving maw of history.